good morning. I was just reading through all of your comments. Look at what we're making today. Gorgeous earrings. Um, statement earrings are one of my go-to pieces with jewellery. I absolutely love earrings. Um, and they're so simple to make and you can make them very effective very, very easily. So we are going to do a little uh, loop turning 101. Can't even get this one in. Um, Oh, lots of you are saying that you are looking forward to this because you're really hopeless with pins. So if you've got any questions, if you struggle with any bits and pieces, look at these freshwater pearls we're using. Aren't they gorgeous? Um, if you struggle with any of your pins, any of your loop turning, let me know and I will go through so many of your questions today. This is a really nice quick make. So... We don't have to be engrossed in techniques and um, spending a lot of time concentrating on actually making them. I want to make sure that we're gonna perfect your loops and get them right. Now we've got the most amazing freshwater pearls on the website. Um, I love using them and we don't very often get to use them because they are expensive. So when you are making things like your necklaces and your bracelets, you normally need a lot of them. Look at these. I'll turn you down in a moment so you can see actually the colour and the shapes and textures of them. Uh, when you are doing something like your earrings, you want to use those statement beads. You want to really be giving it that amazing pop of colour, texture, um, just a really nice finishing touch. If your techniques are simple, use amazing beads because then it's just going to lift those makes and make them look even better. So, um, I'm not sure how we are with stock today. So. I'm gonna pop straight onto the website so that you can go and have a little look because I haven't used these freshwater pearls, gosh, I think since we probably started doing the Facebook Lives. I know I showed you some pearl knotting um, and I haven't used them since then. So they, um, they don't very often get to feature. So Facebook tutorials onto our website and multi-layered earrings today. Now I've put all the bits and pieces in here that you will need just in case you don't have them. I know a lot of you are new, maybe you haven't yet started turning loops, this is the place to go. So we've got black, champagne gold, gold, rhodium, rose gold and silver. They are our six main base metal and colour findings that we have and we've got everything to match them. So um, they will be in here as well. So first of all, you just need to pick your favourite colour. That's probably the hardest bit. And then you've got the amazing uh, freshwater pearls. So I've got uh, three of these with me today, I think. Um, so I've got the oval peacocks, the oval silver. Now these are the 11 to 12 millimeters. They are the ones that I'm wearing, nice large size. Uh, we've also got them in the oval white as well. Um, really, really beautiful. And as you can see, the price varies from them depending on uh, the colour as well. Then we've got the matching head pins. Head pins are the ones I'm going to be using today. So we've got the black, the champagne, the gold, the rhodium, the rose gold, silver, black silver, champagne gold, and it goes on and on. So then you've got your um, 30 millimeter head pins and your 50 millimeter head pins. So if you know you want those lovely big long droplets, and then go for those larger ones. Um, the freshwater pearls, uh, we've put the bigger size in here. We will have some smaller ones on the website as well. Um, so your loops today, it's gonna help whether you're using gauged wire, whether you are using head and eye pins, whether you're using memory wire, the techniques are all the same. So we're gonna talk about how you hold them, how you measure them, all those sorts of things as well. And then these are the earrings that we will make. Now, of course, I've done them in rose gold, obviously. And <laughs> someone's put, uh, Camille, guess you're using rose gold. Yes, I am. <laughs> you know me. Okay, oh, sorry, wrong button. There we go. So these are the earrings that we're making and I absolutely love doing these triple strands. When you hang them, as you just saw on my ears, they just cluster together really beautifully and your spacing is really important when you're doing something like this. And very often when we use head or eye pins, we actually trim them off directly above the bead to create an attachable loop. But I like having them exposed, especially when you've got beautiful matching metal colors 
like these. Now do let me know if you've got any questions or else I'm just going to crack on straight into it and then if you want to see anything again or you want me to go over bits and pieces then just ask and we can revisit anything. So these are the silver that I was just showing you on the website. Um, 11 to 12 mil so they are an amazing size. As you can see your strand which is 14 inches you get a lot and I'm using six beads at a time to make a pair of earrings so maybe you've made a grey bracelet or a grey necklace and you would like a matching pair of earrings to go with it something like this um, or of course if you're selling them adding in that full set of jewellery will always allow you to be able to charge that little bit more as well and it's just it's nicer to gift nicer to display these are going to be fantastic because you could make just one out into an earring. Therefore, you're going to get several out of these kits, several pairs. <coughs> or, of course, you can use multiple ones. And I'm going to show you lots of different ways to attach these on. So they are your uh, flat ovals in the silver. These are your flat ovals in the peacock. Uh, peacock blue I think it was called a peacock purple um absolutely gorgeous these are slightly smaller in size these will be on the website and um, these are six to seven millimeter and um, you don't quite get the impact if you're going to do statement earrings you might as well go bigger um but that's um a really nice way uh, to add that color in as well I'll leave these ones up here so you know the ones that we've got um and then finally so these are more of a rice pearl so in the shape of them um, so these are flat, being in that they have a flat back, and then these ones are rice. So this is the uh, shape of the rice pearls that you get. So they have a little bit more texture in them. Uh, these are fantastic for strong projects because, of course, they sit beautifully on your skin and they will look gorgeous in the earrings. I normally attach these vertically onto each other, which we'll do today as well. Okay, so first things first, head pins. We've got all the colours. If you want to see any of them live, then let me know. I can take you through them all because there is a slight difference in them all. Um, I actually tend to go for the champagne gold a lot in these as well. Now, your difference between head and eye pins. I've got a rogue ball one in there. Um, the difference between head and eye pins. Now, a head pin gives you that flush finish. The eye pin gives you an eye. So this is how they'll come to you in the pack. So an eye is, this is the loop that we replicate from an eye pin to be able to make beads connectable top and bottom. I'll take you through this in a minute. And your head pin has that nail tip finish. So that's what you use for your flush finish. So it's a droplet, it's a charm. We're not going to connect them together to make strings and chains. We're gonna use them to um, have that full stop. So for the earrings, they're absolutely perfect. Okay, so we're gonna do, let's do some loop turning first of all. I'll show you a few different ways that we can uh, make your earrings. So let's go for, should we just go big? Let's go big. I'm gonna go for a droplet that has three of these on them as opposed to individually. So we would need the eye pins for those. So I'm gonna take three eye pins and eye pins are quite a good place to start in perfecting your loops because you have that loop all ready to work with, the one that we're going to replicate. So that's going to give you the right size, the right shape, and it's a good way to see whether you're doing it correctly or not. So take your round nose pliers and pop them onto the eye. So this is straight from the pack. So this is the fabricated eye that comes on the eye pins when you open them up. And then this will give you the depth of the pliers, as you know, We've got smaller uh, um, width at the top of our pliers down to larger at the bottom. So depending on where you go, do you remember when uh, we were making our little loops on Friday in our wire? It's going to give you a different size of loop. So the smallest tip is what we used here to create the smaller loop up on top but then right down to the plier is going to give you a really large loop. Your, your round nose pliers are perfectly round, so there's no point trying to, um, there's no point trying to free form a circle. I'm just laughing at Kitty because she didn't have any snow and she's fuming. <laughs> yeah, because so many people did. Morning Kitty, I'm sorry you haven't got any snow. I've had minimal snow. All of my family down in Bedfordshire, they've had loads. Um, and I've, I've actually only had a little bit, but it's like our third snow this year, so I'm just being greedy. I'm sorry I didn't blow it fast enough down to you. 
Okay, so the eye pins are going to give us the right depth of the plier that we need to replicate. So we're going to pop a little uh, line. You could use uh, like a Sharpie pen, um, anything like that. Don't scratch it, but use a pen so that you can take it off. And um, we're going to just put a little line on there. That will give us the right depth of your plier to start creating those loops. Oh, yes, Lucy, you're in Milton Keynes, aren't you? You're just around the corner from my lot in Leighton Buzzard and Wing. They had so much snow. And I think even London did as well, uh, which is really rare. LJ, you were just saying you've had it for a change, which is nice. <laughs> okay, so I'm bending the pin directly above the bead to give me a 90 degree angle. And the reason we do that is because I'm going to roll the wire back on top of the pin. So if I were to just keep it straight and then we roll, it's just all going to go off to the side. I want to centralise it. So we'll take it off to a 90 degrees first of all, and then bring it back. Now you need to leave a centimetre and you can either do, you can literally measure a centimetre or you can do it by eye. Now a centimetre is what you need for a standard sized loop. Uh, you can either sit down, sit the bead down next to it, measure it up, make sure that you're using your flush nose cutters in the right direction. So many times when I've taught, I've seen people measure it up and then cut it using the wrong side. Because you have an indentation on this side of your pliers, not all of them will, but most will, uh, you're not actually going to see where you're actually cutting it. Make sure you cut it from the flush side of your blade. That way you're always going to get the exact measurement and where you are wanting to go. So we're going to go a centimetre, holding on to that excess wire that comes off because we can actually use these excess wires to make an extra eye pin. So there's no wastage either especially if you're using your 50 mil eye pins or head pins, because of course they're longer. If you're trimming these off, I'd always go for smaller um, because then you're limiting some of that wastage as well. But I can use this for some of my smaller beads. Now, if you want to, if you're struggling measuring it up, you can actually take, in fact, we'll take this little piece of extra wire. You can measure a centimeter like so and bend it. And you can actually use this then as your measuring stick so when you are popping your beads uh, onto the wire, you can use this as a lovely little measure. Or Kitty's top tip, and I don't know why I'd never thought about this, I've never seen it done. Take a one millimetre bead. Now, the only problem with this is that um, if, for example, I was threading a one millimetre bead onto this pin, because of course that's going to give you a centimetre in gap, you would see that it's not going to sit flush up to the bead. So you would add on your feature bead, the bead that you want to use. Then you thread on a 10 millimetre bead, which is going to give you your one centimetre. So that will sit flush up here. I should have grabbed a 10 mil, but I don't have one. Um, and then you would cut your wire up at the top above your 10 mil bead and then bend it. And that will give you the perfect size as well. Cutting the wire is going to affect the size of your loop. So that is an amazing top tip to make sure that you always get the same size of wire. Okay, so down to that marker point on our pliers to create the little loops. Um, Susan says, these are nice big beads, but with smaller ones, I find turning the pin to 90 degrees really difficult. Do you have a top tip for that? I do. As soon as we get to our smaller beads, I will show you. And I agree, when you go down in size of beads, it's a little bit harder to hold on to everything. So while you're perfecting things, start with bigger beads and then we'll go down to smallers. Um, I will do that for you in one sec. Okay, so when you are attaching your uh, loops, we want to make sure that everything stays in place. So I'm going to hold my thumb to stabilise the pin and the bead is just going to sit on top of my finger like so. So I'm getting, I'm managing to hold everything all in place. And I like to have the pin facing up to the ceiling and I'm going to roll away from me. And then the grip that I've got on my hand, I'm going to make myself big for a sec so that I can show you. I always start with my pliers flat and then I'm going to rotate my wrist to 90 degrees, let go of my grip and come back. When I've been teaching, I've seen so many people sit there and you're turning your loops and your arms are going all the way round and it's fine to do as a one-off. If you're going to sit and do lots, then it's not going to be comfortable for you. So a nice flat grip on the pin, holding that, and then it's just like a handlebar. So you're just moving away from you. You could move towards you if you wanted to. There is no right or wrong with turning loops, 
so long as you get a loop in the end. So I'll show you a few different ways, but I like to roll them away from me. So I'll go through um, the direction I bent the pin in a moment as well, actually. So you want to make sure that you've got no wire poking out at the top. So nice and flush. You can only just about see the wire there. I've got enough that I can hold on to, but not enough that it's sticking out at the top. If you have wire sticking out at the top, your wire, um, your loops will end up more like shepherd's crooks. And I'll do one here for you to see. So if your loops look like this in shape, it's not a perfectly round loop, as you can see, because this little flat bit of wire that was poking out the top of the pliers hasn't been rounded. So you do want to make sure that you round as much of the wire as possible, and you'll do that by having it as flush as possible, like so. And then that flat wrist I was just talking about, holding that pin so that I get a little bit of grip over, rotate my wrist. Once I kind of get it upside down, I'll let go and I'll turn back and you're keeping it at that point on your plier so that you get the perfect sized loop. And then you can see that houses your bead in the middle. Now it was moving slightly because I wasn't looking at it, I was actually looking at the screen. <laughs> but you can see now you've got a pin top and bottom. So this will now make this connectable. I could extend as many of these together and make a beautiful chain. And that's what we'll do for our earring here. So we'll go through it again. I pin onto the bead, push it all the way down. Now the rotation that you bend to 90 degrees will affect the direction of the, the loop. So for example, if I were to take my pin here and come right down to the side, when I roll it, my loop will be in the same direction. If I take it straight down, and I'll show you how that will affect the size of um, the direction of this loop. It's not the end of the world. We can uh, redirect it, um, but it just means for an extra step. And when you're working with wire, you want to minimalize the amount that you work with it. The more you work with it, the more fragile it's gonna become. So we want to minimalize that. So gonna create another little loop here, lovely little tiny movement. So actually I'm only doing this with my wrist. I'm not doing it all in one. Tiny movements will give you more control because you can correct if you are going wrong. So can you see now I've got one pin, uh, one loop sitting facing me. The other loop is horizontal below it and you want them all to be in the same direction. That's going to give you the neatest and most professional finish. So I'm just going to hold them and nudge them around and now they're facing in the same direction. So if you have any that are off uh, kilter with each other, you can um, just give them a little knock with your pliers and straighten those up. Okay, now for our last one, it's going to be the very bottom of our earring. So I need that full stop. It's the end of our sentence. So I'm gonna add on a head pin. So a head pin onto my last bead will give me the flush finish that I want. So with this one, of course, you don't need to worry about the direction of your pin. It will be absolutely fine. Cutting and leaving these extras and we'll make those into eye pins in a moment. Same point on your pliers, lovely little movements, just giving it those little knocks all the time and you'll get the perfect loop. So that will give me a really beautiful drop earring, nice and big. You know I like my statement earrings, but <clears throat> nice and big and we'll attach this onto our ear wire. Now, if you've got your lovely little four millimeter jump rings, and again, those six colors that I said we do all of our findings in, that's the same for our ear wires, our pins, our clasps, our jump rings, culottes, crimp beads, the whole shebang. You're gonna be able to get all of your findings in the same color, and they will all be in the findings category on the website. Do apologize, taking lots of drinks today. My throat's a bit, a bit quirky. Okay, so. Attaching them on, I like to, um, when I'm using uh, beads like these, give it just a little bit more movement. Now I can either attach all of these straight to each other, or, and it would obviously give me that little bit more length as well, I don't really think we need any more length on these, um, you could attach with a jump ring in the middle as well. So that's gonna give you a little bit more movement. Um, and of course it depends on the direction. So by adding an extra loop, 
you will change the direction. So if you think of it like a paper chain, I'm sure you've all made those as kids, every time you add a link, it changes the direction. So you'll go from facing on to flat, to facing on to flat. So every time you add an extra pin or an extra uh, jump ring, it's going to do just that. It will change the direction. And I'll show you that when we do these ones. So first of all, I think I'm gonna add a jump ring up at the top just to give it that movement away from my ear wires. So jump rings, we twist them open to connect on. And I don't like opening the loops on my ear wires. Um, I just find them that little bit too fragile to play with. So I will always connect them on using a jump ring. And then to attach them onto each other, I'm gonna take my loop and I'm gonna open it just like a jump ring. So I'm gonna take that open side, I'm gonna lift it upwards. So I'm not pulling that circle apart, I'm just lifting it up. And then popping that into the previous bead and closing it off, which will give me a perfect finish. Flip that around, open up the next one, linking it on, closing it shut. And now you've got a really gorgeous earring, very, very simple, uh, with just three beads. Um, the crystal cone beads, yeah, I did, I did some really beautiful earrings. I haven't got them to hand, actually. Um, using this technique with the crystal cones, we, um, I think... I think Kitty calls them crystal trees because they're shaped like a little Christmas tree. And I turned them on their head to make them into an arrow and used those and we made a matching necklace as well. I loved that one. Um, I'll have to try and revisit that. Okay, so that's one choice with your three beads as a droplet earring. Now we'll go for a statement. So I'm gonna change to my head pins uh, of which I need three for each of my drops like so and then let's go for doo, 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 doo. I'm gonna go for the rice ones for this one because these actually sit really nicely and I love the shape on them so you'll always get that irregularity with freshwater pearls and I really like it. it's like using semi-precious beads every single one is going to be completely different so I'm going to add on three of my beads onto my head pins. And these freshwater pearls are fabulous because the holes in them are actually... Thank you, Earl. We did quite well to go until 25 past without him uh, wanting to be known, didn't we? Curly, come here. Come say hello then. If you really want to be seen. So you've got all three of your beads on here. Everyone's saying, good morning, Curly. <laughs> he was um, he was walking around just before I started in the timer and chucked him in his bed, but it didn't really last. Okay, so um, because all of your beads are completely irregular, you can pick which one you want as the bottom. Here, of course, they're all about the same size, same with our rice beads, but you could even graduate those in size as well. Like uh, miracle beads, you could do an eight, a six and a four. That would look really beautiful. So my first one, I'm gonna use this one because it's slightly wider, so it's my biggest pearl. I'm going to keep the pin exactly, oh yeah, he's Curly and Earl. His name is Earl, but we call him Curly as a little nickname. <laughs> he's called Earl because he's gray. Oh, Kitty says, I have Curly. Kitty has Christopher. <laughs> Either way, home lives get interrupted, don't they? It's just the way we live now. Um, just think, you know, before before COVID and before doing all of these Zoom classes and um, all of these uh, all of these lives online, you'd be mortified if anything got interrupted, wouldn't you? Whereas now, because we're just all at home, it's. I mean, even the celebrities and the news readers, they do it, don't they? I'm quite pleased because it's hard to keep all of this lot quiet. Okay, so I've turned my loop. I kept my pin straight. I turned my loop, but as you can see. It's off center, it's more like a P. So I'm gonna pop my plier into that pin and I'm just gonna knock that pin underneath it so that I can straighten up that loop and it's perfectly on top. Okay, so that's my first droplet. Because these beads were 11 to 12 mil, they're quite big. If you wanted to use smaller pins for these so that your droplets weren't quite as big, then you could as well. Now to measure up the next one, I'm going to sit it, I want the pearl to sit 
directly above the previous one. Therefore, I need my loop to be in the same place so that my bead will sit here. So I just line it up on the mat. I will take my pliers and hold where the pin was when they were lying next to each other. And then I will bend that to 90 degrees in that place. So this will give me my 90 degrees is my positioning for my loop. Then I'm gonna take my pliers cut and leave, I'm doing just under a centimetre for these actually because I am making very small loops. Lovely little loops and because I bent this pin to 90 degrees, my pin is already in the centre and I'm just gonna straighten that up ever so slightly. It's a bit harder to do with um, turning your loops with these and keeping your pins really, really straight because you don't have as much to hold on to. Normally I've got that bead to kind of counterbalance <coughs> and give me something to hold on to, and I don't have that here. So I'll address that in this one. So again, I want my bead to sit directly above the one that we've just created. Therefore, I'll take my pliers, hold where the loop was on that pin, bend it to 90 degrees. And then again, cut and leave just under a centimeter. If you wanna measure the first one, you can. And then holding, so I'm not holding the bead, whereas we would normally, I'm kind of keeping my finger just where the loop is and that will prevent everything from spinning around and getting away from me. Lovely little loop. And then I've got my three pins that are gonna give me the perfect drop and I love making these earrings. They are my go-to. If ever I make earrings <clears throat> normally I prefer using these drops, I just love it, and especially when you get the uh, mixed metals um, that we've got here, because all of the findings work perfectly together. So I'm gonna attach these with a jump ring, because I want everything to sit nice and neatly. And there's a few ways that you can do it. If you sit them like this, you're going to get that graduation. I like it when they cluster together. So I actually put my longest pin in the middle and I do a shorter one either side and then when I'm wearing them they cluster together as opposed to giving you that diagonal finish so I'll make another one in exactly the same way and also just make sure that my open section of the pin here is on my right hand side I'm going to thread them all on in that same way because then from the very front I have a perfect finish, so you can't see any of those open loops. And then just make sure that your ear wire, of course, is facing the uh, reverse way, so that wire will go into your ear in that direction, so that your front side is the right way. I love them. Look at those. I think they're really gorgeous. So you've got your droplets, all of them together you've got your clusters I'll make another one to match this one and we'll put it on in the other direction just to show you that um, even though it's very very simple you can still have fun with the design just because we are making a simple make doesn't mean you can't get creative with it so we'll do this one and we'll do it the other way and then I'm going to use the smaller smaller pearls and show you, I can't remember who it was that asked, sorry, um, about actually turning those, uh, knocking your pins over, uh, bending them to 90 degrees above smaller beads. So we'll go through that as well. Do let me know, I'm trying to keep an eye on all of your comments, um, but do let me know if you are struggling with anything and you would like me to address it. So I'll go back, um, we were talking about knocking those uh, pins over to 90 degrees above small beads. Let me know, I'll uh, go through that for you. Katrina says, good morning, Sarah and Beaders. I'm a bit late and enjoying this with pearls. I know how to do these loops, etc. but good to refresh and you explain it so very well, especially for newbies. Thank you so much. That's the main thing. I think we can all... We can all learn and perfect our techniques, can't we? Um, there's always extra things that we can learn. And of course, many of us have been making jewellery for a long, long time. But with these lives, we are picking up some lovely new customers along the way as well. Some people finding us by pure accident. And it's just going to give you all something to focus on and get creative. I think creativity at the moment 
is a saving grace for a lot of people. Okay, so I'll do my three pins in exactly the same way. So I'm gonna keep my long one, just turning my loop first of all. So you'll see I'm using my thumb, because I don't have my bead to hold on to, I'm using my thumb just to help mold that wire around. But of course it's off center, adding that pin into the middle, knocking that back and that will give me my loop directly up on top. Lining it up so that I can get the right droplet, bending it to 90 degrees. And you don't have to do it so that the beads sit directly next to each other. You can do it so that you have more of a gap. You could even do it, um, it would probably give you more like a sort of chandelier finish if you had them all at the same length. They might just sit nicely together. <clears throat> your, your loops don't always have to go perfectly. I know I just sit here and turn them. I was gonna say like I've been doing it forever, but I've probably been doing loops. This was the first, other than stretch elastic, turning a loop was the first technique that I learned. And here I am, what, 18 years later? Still using loops in so many makes. So it's a really versatile one that is worth perfecting. But sometimes even, you know, I'll take one off of my pliers and think, oh heck, it's off center, it's not joined up. There's always ways that you can just nudge it and perfect it. But by doing those little finishing touches and not just settling for it as it comes off your plier, uh, you will get the most professional and neatest finish. Okay, so tiny little loops giving me that finish. And then this one will attach on in that graduation. So rather than putting them on at different lengths, we will do them in size order. So just opening up my jump ring and we'll go for the smallest one first, then the middle. Again, I'm making sure that the open side of my loops are going and facing the back. And then popping that on. Now, when you make the other earring to this one, and I'll hold these up flush to the camera in a moment so that you can see. So you can see you get that lovely graduation. So when you make your other earring, thread it on in the reverse. So I normally make sure that the longer pin will be nearer to my body when I wear it. So it's reverse on either side. So it's longer, medium and small. And that way it really elongates your face as well. Jewelry can change, can change your appearance so much. And by doing that, it actually just elongates your face, will give you a lovely finish. So this one, because it's longer on the inside would be my left earring um, and then these ones you don't need to worry about that at all really because when you're wearing them they're going to sit nice and neatly together so you will get a very different look from something just as simple as threading them on in a different size order so you can still have lots of fun and creativity with them I'll pop all of these in um, my ears so that you can see them. Okay, down to smaller beads. Let's go down to our smaller freshwater pearls. Now in your link in the video, uh, we've got some of the freshwater pearls in there. The majority of them are larger, but we may have some smaller ones on the website. So go and check out the category and you'll find some beautiful gems to work with. Okay, turning your loops on smaller beads. So this is going back to the technique where we want the bead sat directly next to our loops. We don't want an extension of the pin. It can be a little bit trickier and depending on the beads that you are using, um, it's gonna need a different technique. So for example, with this one, I can actually take my round nose pliers, hold it directly above the bead and I'm gonna hold it at the tiniest point of my plier, the very, very tip. Now you can roll your plier so that it will bend the wire for you. But if you are using, so these freshwater pearls, they won't be, um, they won't be um, too scratchy. Uh, your crystals, for example, have um, edging that you don't wanna chip, especially if you're using very expensive crystals as well. So I'm going to take the very, very tip of my plier and that's, gonna, that's just gonna hold it into place for me. And then I'm gonna take my thumb and bend it over the top of my plier. So that way I've got grip, I'm not, um, not moving them through my fingers, I'm just pushing it down and that will give me 
my 90 degree bend. Now you do get ever such a slight gap above the bead, but it's minimal because I'm holding it at the very tip of my plier. If you go a little bit further down, of course, you're gonna get a bigger, a bigger gap. So do try to make sure that it is as near to the bead as you can get it. And then we'll cut and leave our centimeter. And then this one I'm gonna to roll towards me because I know that a lot of you don't like rolling them away from you. So when I was holding it a moment ago, I had my pin facing up to the ceiling and that meant I could roll away. If you hold your bead flat and your pin will be parallel to your finger, parallel to the table, you can then pop your pliers in. Again, just make sure that you've got no wire coming out the side. And this time I'll reverse roll it so I can roll it towards me. And I think quite a lot of left-handed people do it this way. But what's harder is if I start with a flat wrist because I can't get the movement towards me. So if you prefer rolling it towards you, turn your hand around. And by turning it around, I'll then get that whole 90 degree movement. Now you can see I'm not used to rolling them towards me, so I'm off center. I've still got a loop, but it's at a funny angle. But then you can just take your pliers and straighten that up. So the end result is the same. For me, it needs a lot more tweaking because I'm not used to it, but I still get a loop. So if you find your loops look more like that, it might be because you're rolling them towards you. For me, it just doesn't line up. It doesn't give me that straight balance because you're trying to roll it towards you so that you can see, but you're slightly off center. Um, so it's a little bit trickier. So you might find a lot of your loops look a bit wonky and that might just be the direction that you're rolling and how you are viewing it. So try and make it as easy for yourself as you can. If they're off center, just knock it back ever so slightly, which will line it up. It might open up some of that loop, but then you can pop your pliers in and just finish it off by closing it. And then you'll still get a nice loop. I think, oh, many of you were asking about wrapped loops. Now, I don't personally like doing wrapped loops with my head and my eye pins. I'll do it for you now, just because you've asked. <laughs> um, I would normally do it with a gauged wire. Um, there are a couple of other ways, actually. If you don't like the flush finish of a head pin and you want more of a finish, you can actually spiral and coil the end of them to give you a stop. So let's do that with this one. I'll do these two other things. So we'll spiral the end and then we will also do um, a wrapped loop as well. So I'm gonna knock this bead, uh, knock this pin slightly off, not to 90 degrees, probably more like a, I don't know what, 45-ish, something like that. Maybe a bit more. I'm not homeschooling maths, don't worry. Um, so that I've just got it slightly off center. And then you can create a little coil on the bottom. Now, any of you who saw the caged beads will know uh, these little spirals and how you can do them. I'm gonna take the very end of my plier and create the teeniest, tiniest loop that I can. So the very, very end, like so. And then I'm gonna allow the wire to start to overlap. I'm still using the same teeny, tiny, little movements. I'm allowing it to start overlapping. Now I'm gonna change to my flat nose pliers. I'm gonna hold this loop to make sure you can see that I've got that slight overlap there. Holding my flat nose pliers, I'm just gonna rotate around so I'm kind of molding the wire around itself. I'm leaving the edge of the wire exposed so I can see where it is, see where it's going. And you'll see I'm just getting this lovely little spiral. So this is an eye pin that I have now given a handmade full stop to. So you get that lovely little spiral on the bottom. Really nice for adding charms as well. It's a really nice way. My pin is now attachable at the top, so you could put that on the bottom of some of your earrings. Just gives you a handmade finish. Would be really nice for your little droplets as well. So that is that one. Uh, wrapped loops. Okay, I'm going to use a bigger bead so that we can hold on to it. 
So wrapped loops are normally used for more of a handmade finish, but also for strength and security. So um, as you know, with the pins that we've been using, if you struggle getting your uh, pins through any of your, be of your beads, you, if you don't have a bead reamer, the hole in these is really small. It is tight on some of them. Just make sure you get it all the way through and then hold that and push it down. Not all of them will go straight to the bottom. And if you don't like that finish, just choose another bead <coughs> because they are um, natural. You're going to get a different finish on all of them. So your wrapped loops are for extra strength and security. So if you are adding charms to a bracelet and you know it's going to have a lot of movement, maybe you are threading them onto tiger tail or even onto stretch elastic, a wrapped loop will give you a better and more secure finish. So here, obviously, I've got an exposed loop. If I were to put a piece of string through here, in fact, I could probably show you with just what I've got here on my freshwater pearls. So if I were to loop this on, as soon as that thread comes down to the bottom, it's going to come straight out. So you might be thinking that you've um, made a really nice bracelet or necklace, but as that movement happens and it comes down to that loop, it's going to come straight through. So that's what we would use. Um... That's what we would use a wrapped loop for, that extra security. So we'll do that now. Um, Jenny has a question. This is brilliant, Sarah. Do you ever use plastic coating on your pliers to stop them scratching? Do you know, I used to have the most amazing stuff. Um, and I've been trying to find it. Um, I'll have to see if Kitty can get it in stock for us. It used to be a waxed coat. Well, it was more like a rubber coating, actually. You could dip your pliers in it. Anyone who has followed me on Crit and Craft for the last, I don't know, 10, 11 years, well, no, that I used to use it all the time. We used to sell it. And you dip your pliers in it and then it dries. It gives you a coating on the pliers. And then, um, yeah, we do, Camille. Don't worry, they'll sort it out for us. We've got admin on the case. Um, and then you can pull these off and it would leave your pliers. I don't really ever bother because the quality of my pliers are really, really lovely. Um, so I don't very often get scratches. But you can tell on little things like this, if you have uh, little scratches or if you use uh, your pliers for a lot of wire work, I mean, these aren't dented at all. These are still really, really lovely. And I've been using these for years. Um, but you can put a little bit of sellotape around them. You could put, um, you know, something to protect those. If you have your nylon coated pliers, then they are good to use for wire as well. It will just stop the scratching. Because with things like these where they are plated, any of those scratches are then going to allow the metal to be exposed to the air and that is what will start your tarnishing and your rusting. So if you find that your, um, your, your wire tarnishes very quickly, then you do need to look at the pliers that you're using because they may be a little bit rough. Uh, for example, with my round nose pliers, these are perfectly smooth, but when I teach and I see a lot of people come to the classes, some of them have really rough, like really hardy pliers. Um, and that is just going to take it straight off. So you do want to protect yourself from those. Personally, I don't ever bother because I'm happy with the quality of my pliers, but you um, absolutely can if you feel like you need to protect your wire. If you find you're getting lots of scratches and indents, then you can coat them. Even just with sellotape is absolutely fine. Uh, okay, what are we doing? Wrapped loops. So, with the wrapped loop, like I said, that extra strength and security, you need a little bit of gap in between the loop that we turn and the bead, not like we've done here where we bend it to 90 degrees directly above it. We need a little bit of a gap. So I'm gonna pop my pliers in. You only need a couple of mil. And then I'm just gonna knock that wire ever so slightly over just to give me a little bit of um, an angle. You only need a few mil because this gap in between my pin and my pearl is where the wire will wrap. So we're going to cover that with wrapped wire. So I'm going to pop my pliers in at the same space that you want your size of loop. So um, just like we did before, that same space. But can you see I've left that gap in between my bead? I'm going to bring my wire all the way around. And then I can't go any further because my wire has met my bead. So I'm just going to rotate my pliers around to expose that space underneath it. And then we'll close that off by bringing our wire all the way around. 
So I've just done that with my pliers, my uh, flat nose pliers. So can you see, if I straighten this up slightly, because you can't see the gap in between there, I now have a loop at the top with a little bit of gap underneath it. And I'm just going to straighten up this loop because it's come ever so slightly off centre. So I'm just going to straighten it up. And now I'm going to switch to my flat nose pliers. You can either do flat, like so, or you can use your round nose in it. Exactly, Brenda. It doesn't pay to buy cheap tools. Um, you will ruin uh, your materials and it's just not going to give you the right finish. Now, you want your wire to be sat directly and horizontally along the nose of your pliers. And then you're going to take the end. So by holding my loop flat in here, that loop isn't going to change. That will still stay as a lovely loop. Masking tape also works and is easy, easy to remove without leaving any residue. Exactly. Yeah, if you use sellotape, you're going to have a sticky residue and you'll need to clean your pliers as well adding in all these extra steps, um, but masking tape would do, and um, I would probably do a couple of layers with your masking tape, because it's just that little bit thinner. It's that little bit more like a paper. Uh, so a couple of layers of that will do. And then you're gonna hold on to the very end of your wire with your pliers, and I'm going to bring it all the way around, all the way around again, and you're gonna keep on going until you fill the gap in between your loop and your bead. And that's your wrapped loop. So now I have no open element to my pin. So like on our eye pins, you have that little open section. Just using my flush nose cutters to cut that as near to the bead as I can. Ever such a slight bit of wire sticking out. So I'm just gonna use my pliers to pinch that in and round it off. And that will give you a perfect wrapped loop. Now, attaching that onto, so now I can put that onto a piece of string or elastic or whatever it might be, if you want to add your little charms into your makes. And now that can have as much movement as you want, as much strength and pull on it, it's never gonna go anywhere. It will not unthread because you have your wrapped loop. So adding charms onto uh, strong pieces, that's how you want to do it. Also, if you're using very heavy beads, so heavy, very precious beads, um, a wrapped loop is a great way to do it. Now you can attach lots of these together, but what you want to make sure is, uh, so for example, if I were gonna do it onto one of these, I would take a head pin, and cut that tip off. So that is just the very, very tip of my head pin, just that flat bit of metal up at the top. So I've still got a complete pin. And then you can uh, create a wrapped loop at one end. So you need to make sure you have long enough pins and that's where your long pins come in really handy as well. Um, if you're going to make these, you're going to need quite a bit of wire. It's at this point, so do you remember when we first turned it around? It's at this point you want to connect it onto the next bead. So for example, I'm just gonna lift this up ever so slightly, just like you would a head or eye, um, a head or eye pin loop. I'm gonna attach that on and close it down. And that way, because of course, once you've wrapped it, you're not going to be able to open it to attach anything else on. So you have to remember to do it at this stage. Then you can take your pliers. I would probably go for round nose pliers here rather than flat because I don't want to squash the bead that I've got up at the top. I want to make sure that I'm holding it. And then you can use your flat nose pliers. I haven't really got enough wire here, but it would be enough to give me just one or two. Wrapping that all the way around. And then you've got a closed connection on two of your pins and you can move those around as much as you want. They are never going to come undone. But that's the point that you would need to attach them on. Okay, so I think that's everything. I think I've answered all of your questions and gone through it all. Oh, Margaret says you're great with your demo, Sarah. Explained so very well. Thank you guys, you're amazing. Thank you, Sarah Kitty and Sarah P. Um, oh. 
We did quite well. He only interrupted us once. Kelly, what's this? Come here. Noisy boy. Thank you. We don't need any more of that. In your bed. Um, so, with your earrings, I'm going to show you how they all sit. So, the ones that I had on first of all, these are the triple layers. So, you can see, because I put these on in alternate orders, so if I separate these out, I've gone medium, large, small. When they hang, they just sit perfectly and beautifully on top of each other. So, that's going to give you uh, a really lovely finish. You made something like that last year and um, putting it on the bead before you curled it around was the bit I kept forgetting. Yes, um, last year we used our crystal mixes to create a wrapped loop chain. Um, and you're right, you'll sit there. So I used a gauge wire for that. Um, for those of you who are struggling, somebody said you really struggle with um, wrapped loops. Start with a gauged wire. Um, I would probably recommend um, about a 0.8 millimeter in thickness of your wire. Uh, start with that and I promise you that will make it so much easier than using your head and eye pins. Um, because you can give yourself lots of extra wire, it's slightly more pliable so it's easier to turn. Uh, so this is the larger freshwater pearls that we put together. That's going to give me the same effect. This one here I've done as the little droplets uh, using the rice pearls. So they are six and seven mil. So same effect, but you can see they sit beautifully and um, vertically on top of each other. If you didn't alternate the uh, lengths and you added them on all in size order then that's going to give you a slightly different finish find that hole. a slightly different finish in that you get more of a graduation ever so slightly as opposed to them sitting so this one here actually I would have put in my left ear because you can see I've got my shorter pin directly next to my face and if you want to elongate it a bit more um, just make sure that you take your longer pin nearer to your face and it's just that little bit more flattering ever so slightly but you know me I'm fussy in the detail and then with the larger pearls you've also then got your droplets as well so same beads same materials same technique for different finishes um, as well as your wrap loops as well oh and then of course you've got your spiral ones but I didn't add that on so if you just want to do an individual an individual droplet earring here we've got that lovely spiral as well it just gives it that little bit more of a handmade finish those leftover beads you've got from necklaces bracelets you could just use one bead to make um, an earring but still have it as a beautiful handmade piece of jewelry by adding those handmade elements like your spirals um, and could I just say that if you make a necklace with all wrapped loops you need a weak link somewhere for safety reasons because if you catch your necklace on something you need to be able to pull it apart it's easier to replace a loop than a life and very good point normally when you're doing wrapped loops or exactly if you're doing necklaces like that rather than having a lariat necklace so you would put it over your head use like an s clasp or a hook clasp so it's still decorative it's still going to give you a lovely finish those little loops that we were making on friday they're absolutely perfect for it so we bound these wires together but um you wouldn't need to bind them you could just have that little loop that would give you a little hook in link that, like you say and would come apart really really easily um excellent okay so i think you're all happy with your loops um if you've got any questions or um of course you come away from the video start to make it and you just think oh it's not working for me then um please do give me a shout uh, and i will get back to you and help you with uh, your loops and any top tips um post little pictures in the totally handmade by totally beads group and of course um kitty and i can come back to you with any of your questions now do you want to see something special? I'm very, very, very proud of this. I'm not with you until Friday, by which time my chandelier is going to be on the ceiling. Uh, for those of you who have been messaging me and following my uh, chandelier experience, I've been beading a chandelier, bought the beads, 
last spring, last summer. Um, can't remember when it was. Um, and it's just been one of these little projects whereby if I get a little afternoon to myself or a couple of hours, I've been milling away at it. Um, and last night I finished it. So I've um, put all the beads on. I'm using embroidery hoops and wooden beads. I'll show you now. Um, and so today is the construction and the hanging. Right, you ready for this? Now you can see why it's been taking me so long <laughs> to do. I was so happy when I finished it last night. So inside is a smaller embroidery hoop. Outside is a larger embroidery hoop. And then I've got my chandelier. So I need to come up with a way to hang it today. This is gonna be my uh, light in my study. When we were doing home decor, uh, last Friday, I think it was, I was saying to you that I like to put uh, something that I've made into each of uh, the rooms in my house. So uh, in the study here, um, we had a really ugly light when we moved in. Uh, so I thought right now's the time I'm gonna do it. So um, keep an eye on Facebook and Instagram. I'll, I'll pop some pictures up. I just need to come up with a way. I'm gonna have to get the Dremel out and a load of wrapped loops, I think, is um, pretty much gonna be what's gonna hang this up. Hubby's put a little, uh, a little disc on my light fitting. So this is what I've been working on um, and I finally finished it. So I will, I will try to get that up over the next couple of days. Um, but I just thought, cause I get so many people saying, have you finished it yet? Have you finished it yet? Uh, yes, I nearly have. <laughs> okay, so uh, hopefully by Friday, I don't know, maybe I can angle you up and you can see it. I'll, um, I will make sure that I get it finished by Friday. Um, thank you all so much for joining. I'll see you on Friday in our Facebook Live. Kitty will be with you tomorrow, Sarah Payne with you on Wednesday. Um, have a lovely week, guys. Stay safe, take care. I'll see you on Friday and thank you so much for joining. Take care, bye.